Okay, this is question number six on the final exam for uh, winter 2012, and we're looking at a regression question. And a college administrator wants to determine if standardized test scores are a good linear predictor for college GPAs uh, for students at her college. So we have a random sample of 30 students and recorded their end of first year college GPA and ACT scores. She saw from the scatter plot that a linear relationship was acceptable and uh, produced the SPSS, SPSS outputs we have here. Letter A says, in this regression analysis, the variable first year college GPA plays the role of what? Well, the researcher wants to see to determine if standardized test scores are a good predictor for college GPA. In other words, if college GPA responds to um, uh, if it responds to uh, those tests. So it's going to be a response variable. Letter B says provide the equation of the least squares regression line. So we're just going to use our coefficients from this table to construct that. We get y hat equals uh, our B on ACT is 0 0.067 x and then plus our constant. 1.501. Okay. <clears throat> and make sure, of course, that you put that on the answer line. Okay, great. Letter C says one of the students in the data set had an ACT score of 32 and a first year college GPA of 3.92. I'm going to first write that in uh, observation form, right? Coordinate form. There we go. What is the value of the residual for the student? Okay, well, if we refer to our yellow formula card, we can quickly remind ourselves that a residual is your observed y minus your predicted y. So the observed y was 3.92, so I've already got that. Now I need to figure out what my predicted y was. And so my y hat for that person would be 0.67 times their x value of 32 plus 1.501. And if I go ahead and plug that into a calculator, I should get uh, 3.92. Oops, excuse me. 3.645. Okay. And if my residual is actual or observed minus predicted, then that would be 3.92 minus 3.64, which gives me a final answer of 0.275. All right, letter D. The administrator wants to test if there is a significant positive linear relationship between ACT scores and GPA and to conduct it at a 5% significance level. All right, so our null hypothesis then is to see that there's no relationship whatsoever. All right, we want to reject that to be true uh, because the researcher wants to see that B1 is positive greater than zero. Okay, great. If we look up at our SPSS output on uh, beta 1, we get a T statistic of 3.275 and a P value that's provided of 0 0.003. Okay, so if I bring those numbers down here, my test statistic T equals 3.275. And my p-value uh, was 0 0.003. But remember, I just want, I'm doing a one-tailed uh, one test here, one side. So I need to do half of that, 0 0.003 over 2, which gives me 0 0.0015. Okay. Letter E. Based on the results in Part D, the administrator can conclude that there is or is not a relationship uh, well, our p-value is really small, and at a 5% significance level, it's definitely significant. So the researcher can reject the null hypothesis uh, and make a conclusion that the evidence suggests that there is a significant positive linear relationship. Okay. Letter F. Complete the sentence below and show your work. Based on this analysis, blank percent of the variability in the first-year college GPA is not accounted not accounted for its linear relationship with ACT scores. That sounds really, really familiar 
it sounds a lot like r squared, except that in this case, whereas r squared tells us the percentage of variation in y that is accounted for by variation in x, we want to know about the variation that is not accounted for it. So we want to know the complement of r squared, 1 minus r squared. So uh, we have to calculate r squared then. Again, our yellow formula card is going to help us here. And indeed, here's our formula for r squared. It's going to be the SS reg uh, over your SSTO. Okay. And if I go ahead and look uh, up those values uh, in my output, then my uh, SS reg is right here, sum of squares for regression, 2.115. And my SS total, 7.636. Okay, the formula told me to divide my uh, SS reg divided by SS total. So let me scroll back down. So R squared equals uh, 2.115. That was my SS reg divided by my SS total is 7.636 which comes out to be 0.277. But remember, I want the complement, so I have to do 1 minus that. 1 minus 0.277 gives me my final answer, which is uh, 0.723, which is 72.3% of the variability. Great letter G says the administrator obtained a 95% prediction interval for GPA of an incoming student with an ACT score of 30. The prediction interval was 2.62 uh, to 4.41. Which of the following intervals must be the 95% confidence interval for the mean GPA, mean GPA of all students with a score of 30 on their ACT? So we have two intervals, and they're both 95% confidence intervals. One, however, is a prediction interval, and the other is a confidence interval for a mean. And one thing we know about the relationship between those two things is that a prediction interval is going to be wider, wider than a confidence interval for the mean GPA. So what we want to look for is the interval that is, uh, has a large, excuse me, a smaller uh, margin of error than the prediction interval. Okay, so uh, it turns out that if you calculate the margin of errors for each of these, right, which is going to be half the length or half the width of the interval, that this interval here has the smallest, or has a margin of error that's smaller. Okay, so that's going to be our choice. Letter H uh, gives us a residual plot. Okay. And we're asked uh, what assumption is used to check this. Well, what we're doing is we're checking to see that the population of errors, so that the errors have constant variance and no, pop, no obvious patterns. Right, we want to see that they're um, uh, that they're within two horizontal bands, roughly. Okay, you can argue whether or not that's true here, but that's what we're looking for uh, when we examine that that graph. And finally, letter I complete the following sentence: If the administrator had had asked the random sample of students to self-report self-report their first year college GPA and ACT scores then she might have encountered some bias, right? And what we're concerned about is that if you ask students to share their own GPA, uh, they might lie, right? They might tell you that it's higher than it was, and we call that a response bias. We're worried that the observations, in this case students, uh, will not respond honestly.